Hey guys, hey guys. Uh, it's your boy Klaus. It's Tonio. Come you my elephant. Baby. Yeah, this is the new Alpha project whereby we react to videos by Professor Lumumba in Lumumba Explains. Yeah. So today the topic will be about religion. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to it. When you talk about religion, we are talking about a different thing from spirituality. Africans are spiritual, and that spirituality is not unique to African peoples. Other peoples are spiritual too. And Africans, whether you are talking about the Yoruba in uh, Nigeria or the Igbo or the uh, Ashante or the Baganda or the Bunyoro or the Zulu or the Ovambo or the Ovimbundu or the Luo or the Agekoyo. They are spiritual because they believe and recognize that they are temporal beings and that there is a superior being. That is spirituality. Yeah. What's the difference between religion and spirituality? Spirituality. Spirituality. Yeah. Okay, I guess for me, uh, religion is something that uh, was created. It's something that was derived from something. And spirituality oh. is the inner you, the belief in you, in a supreme being. Because uh, when, when, okay, when you look at uh, religion, it's, uh, it's very diverse. And people have different, different uh, beliefs and strong beliefs about their uh, superior being, which is God, or, yeah, for Christian, which is God. So I guess religion is something that was uh, derived. Uh, yeah. Something. Yeah, actually, from that, um, I can feel that one can say religion was created from spirituality. Because yeah. uh, from what you said, the spirituality is, is in everybody. Mm -hmm. You get, uh, everybody believes in a supreme mm -hmm. being. You get, whether it's people who believe in energy, uh, the universe, or a deity like God, um, everybody believes that it's something above us, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the spirituality is common in everybody. Now the religion, that is where... The small... Diverse beliefs. Yeah. That's where the religions came from. And yeah. in our in our African uh, communities, religion. Okay, initially every community had a superior being, and they worshipped according to their like the originality of the culture. But later on, we were imposed to Christianity and uh, other other religions, which we ourselves didn't know about yeah. and from the from the maybe ancient world like uh, in the beginning when uh, religion was being made uh there was different religion derived from a specific religion and specific interest of specific people mm. like for example uh, we have the maybe the orthodox church were from the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. uh, we have the Lutheran Church. So the German took Jesus, mm -hmm. they made him a Lutheran, and then they formed the Lutheran Church. That's from Germany. Protestants, the same from Germany, the, uh, and others from the Eastern Roman <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Empire. So it's something that was derived, and it's it's still uh, evident in our in our societies today that. Uh, some of the religions just have come from specific people. So I guess religion and spirituality are related, but quite different. different. Yeah. Knowing that as a mortal being, you have limitations and that there is an imminent creator. That is to be contradistinguished from religion. What the colonizers brought was religion, spirituality packaged in man-made forms. 
And that is why, therefore, you have things like Roman Catholic. You have organizations such as the Anglican Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Episcopalian Church, the Methodist Church. That is religion. Religion is organization of spirituality into a formal thing, which is then controlled by man claiming to represent God. Africans are therefore spiritual. And I do not want the word spirituality to be used as if it were a synonym of religion. Actually, that does make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, basically, um, what we were saying earlier, mm. that religion is just, from what you said, like religion is just a construct made from spirituality. Yeah. It's here. It's now here. We can see a man-made form of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Though he's also driving a point where by Africans originally. Yeah, well, spiritual, right? Spiritual, yeah. Uh, part of the reason why we talk about religion, I know there is a, a, a Kenyan called Mbiti who has written a lot about uh, African spirituality, and he says that Africans are notoriously religious. And, and that, to me, is a misconception. It is not uniquely Africa. If you go to other civilizations, go to the Hindus, and you read Hindu epics such as the Mahabharata or the Ramayana, you see how spiritual they are. If you go to the Jews and you go to the Talmuds and you look at the history of Judaism, and if you go to the Arabs and see the Quran and you read the Hadiths, you see spirituality. And when you come to African communities, you see spirituality. Who called it black magic? It is African religion and spirituality that other civilizations, particularly the whites and the Arabs, characterize as black magic. There is nothing black about it, and there is nothing magic about it. It is their way of communication with God. Every other civilization has dark powers, and those dark powers are the ones sometimes that are characterize as witchcraft. And if you want to know that these are known to all civilization, they have a word for it. Whenever you see that a society has a word for something, it means that they are familiar and that they practice that thing. So I don't want us to use the word black magic. If it is magic and witchcraft, let it just be witchcraft. And that is only so if you are speaking in English. If I were to be speaking in Chinyanja or Chichewa or Kihaya or Kizanaki, I would use different words. So let us sometimes also recognize very quickly that because we are defining ourselves in a foreign language, we carry the baggage of uh, the use of those languages in a condescending manner and part of the process of decolonizing African minds. witchcraft part mm -hmm. okay yeah, maybe i can highlight it uh, that uh, i guess in the traditional african society witchcraft was something that was greatly practiced mm -hmm. and uh, from our growing when we were young children it was the time that uh, witchcraft was starting to lose meaning mm -hmm. but i guess in the in the uh, in the past in the 20th century it was something that was practiced and it was just a normal like uh, and it was spiritual because somebody had to believe in a supreme uh, spirit being. Yeah, and then perform the miracles or the witchcraft. So I guess that uh, that was that was the strong uh, that was a strong part in our society that uh, having things like it's called society. Remember when you can do it? Yeah, something like that. You know what happened? Well, okay. When uh -huh. uh, when 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 the Western came. They, it didn't just lose meaning. They came and they changed the way that we viewed mm -hmm. our spirit, spirituality. Yeah. So they discarded witchcraft, yeah. saying it was, I don't know, coming from hell or something, whatever. So the, uh, it, uh, the missionaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To them, mm -hmm. it, it could have seemed that way. Because if you think about it, they came with their own, as we said earlier, the construct of 
spirituality, the religion. They came believing that this is how it's supposed to be like, this is how it's supposed to be done. And then they come and find people don't a complete who don't thing. have a church, who don't have a Bible, who don't have any physical representation of a God. But they just believe there is one and they do specific rituals at specific times. They dress like this, they speak like this, they chant like this. Whereby to us, um, in those days I assume it was something very normal. Yeah. Yet it was something uh, understandable by different communities, no matter which community, no matter which community you are from. You get. But to them, to their eyes, they're like, this has to be witchcraft. There's yeah. no way you can be praying, facing towards the sun. You have some things down there. You're yeah. chanting uh, in a language you don't understand. Mm. You get. So uh, to some extent, I wouldn't. I would understand. Um, why to them they would see it that way not that it's right in any manner it isn't right yeah it's not right it, it's very much contradicting yeah because you know they came with something um, quite the opposite in terms of practices yeah. they get they, they maintained the belief that yes it's yeah. true there is one but it's not that mm -hmm. yeah. it's not the one you're mm -hmm. worshipping and it's this one no offense to um, the belief for both different cultures, but yeah. So they came with that belief and then they started changing things around. Uh, for me, I believe that uh, it's a form of colonization. Like, it is. Uh, uh, of the mind. They, <laughs> it happened in political, so in religion it's the same. Uh, they came uh, They came with the belief that uh, this one is greater than this and this one is there. Eh? Right, the right one. Yeah. Do you think because you are right? Mm. That's very okay. controversial. Uh, it's, mm. a, it's, it's controversial. <laughs> okay, for me, because right now we do worship well, yeah, you know, what we are taught by it right, came from them. Right so, <laughs> would you prefer the nowadays <laughs> or the traditional? I, I, according to me, I would say, um, <laughs> according to my opinion mm. about how things were during those days, I would say. Um, I would prefer that, not in any blasphemous way, because the truth is, uh, it's, it's about the faith. Traditional one. Yeah, because uh -huh. at, the, at the end of the day, it's, it's just about faith, because there's nobody out here to tell you that, you know what, I've seen God. Yeah. Again, there's nobody out there, you just have to believe that there is. Yeah. But if you think about it, during the olden days, there was no uh, selection, there was no... Um, discrimination towards a specific this community the, the Luya believe in this the Baganda believe in this because even when we were being taught about religion um, the stories about how the first man mm. came, came to, to be, be they were all different yeah. nobody had it. there was one who came from sand there was one who came from the ant hill there was something about a knee I don't know or a tree something like that you get but nobody ever came and told you no you're worshipping the wrong you get at the end of the day, they all respected that. Yeah, yeah it's just that our practices are different. That's all. Yeah, it's just that you'll pray facing the sun, we'll pray in the morning when it's mm. setting, we'll, you'll pray when it's rising, such things you get. But there was no discrimination as nowadays you'd see whereby people are so selective that those practices are not right. Mm -hmm. um, why are they worshipping this when they're supposed to be worshipping that? You get, and then people are so judgmental when, when at the end of the day. The truth is, none of us knows. <laughs> you get yeah. it's their faith. It's our faith. Mm -hmm. All all we have at the end of the day is faith. Mm -hmm. Is belief that you know what, um, the one I'm praying to, is my God. At the end of the day, uh, you're, the one you're praying to is your God. Mm -hmm. You get and, but I guess um, you know the problem is a lot of people meeting a lot of people different people is that everybody has their own opinions yeah, and opinion, yeah. humans don't like agreeing easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I feel a lot of problems came from that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, in, in, that, in that perspective of uh, colonizing the mind, I guess it was, uh, I don't know, to their own benefits. All right, okay. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah, because uh, okay, I, I believe uh, <coughs> from their writing of the holy book, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he said that uh, man was created from maybe sand, uh, maybe uh, clay. Yeah. And uh, sometimes when I look at the clay, it's black. Okay, I don't know going. why they say that's a good way. I've never thought about that. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that's, a that's a good one. That's a good one. And part of the process of decolonizing African minds is to ensure that we are not yoked by words which are derogatory of the African peoples. It is true that when Christians embrace Christianity and Islam, and indeed any other peoples who have embraced religion, there have been extremes and cults have come about. And let me give you a historical context. What has happened in Shakahola is, is, is not something that is unique or without precedent. In 1978, there was the Georgetown Guyana massacres where 900 people thereabout died with the Reverend Jim Jones. That was an apocalyptic movement in Georgetown, Guyana. We don't talk about it. <laughs> and uh, we also remember that in Waco in Texas, the branch Davidians of David Koresh also were subjected to the same thing. So if you look throughout history, it is not true that Shakahola is without precedent. It follows on a tradition that occurs when a people have been confused and these are doomsday cultic situations that emerge periodically. On that, yeah, it's just the same way that we're saying about nowadays people having so many different opinions about what religion is and spirituality is because it's so easy for somebody to start a church with their own beliefs and start saying that this is how you're going to do things. If you fast like this, um, this is what is going to happen, you're going to heaven, stuff like that. You get people have so many beliefs about um, waiting for Jesus, about them going to meet Jesus themselves, some, you get. And Mohammed, you see the Islamic people also have their own beliefs about that. The Hindu, everybody have their own different beliefs about how it's going to be or how everything is going to come about uh, at the end of the day. But again, from what he says, all of this just brings about small cults and small groups of people believing in something different, though their origin is from one. Because, mm -hmm. um, for example, the poof from Shakahola, I can assume they were just normal protestant mm -hmm. you get and then but you're told the way let's say i as a protestant uh, at my church would be told let's fast for 20 days or 21 days but the fast begins from maybe six to six mm -hmm. you can eat before you can eat after the islamic people also have the ramadan which is almost a similar thing to that but then again, you can you find that set of people who are believing that let's not eat at all, and they, that that is how they had been wired to believe that that is the only way you're going to be atoned for your sins and meet you see God. So I just believe that the the colonization thing and the bringing of um, their religion to ours and mix trying to change ours into theirs brought about so many different opinions and so many different ideologies about how things are supposed to be and how things are supposed to work. Yeah, yeah that's why I would honestly pick the olden days <laughs> to this, because in the olden days, in, our, in African culture, that is, there was, there was no such story about mm -hmm. a certain people who had been told to starve yeah, to for a, a good number of days so that something could happen, or let's do this so that this could happen, let us do something out of the ordinary which does not uh, involve just directly worshiping who you believe in. You get, yeah. yeah so that, honestly, that is that just strengthens my belief that the olden days were better than right now. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, my own cult. No, how would that even be? What would, would I tell people to believe no, in? It's even? not a cult. It's uh, what what sect do? Create uh, what cult? What you're told to create a cult tomorrow? What belief would you create there? You just take the beliefs of people 
you just adjust them to their preferences. That is actually a cult. That is not good. <laughs> this is why. This is why no. we should no, no. go back to the old days. This is why. This is, this is dangerous. This is a dangerous person. That's, that's what's happening out there. Yeah, that's true though. Mm-hmm. That's true though. I, I don't know. Uh, creating so a cult so seems actually easy from the stories we hear. It actually doesn't seem like it's a, it's a difficult job because it's just anybody calling themselves a pastor and coming with certain beliefs and just convincing a group of people. All you need, I believe all you need is just Let's say like 10 to 20 people to strongly believe in that mm-hmm. and then just tell them, spread the word. Yeah. You get that? That is how, again, I would, I'm not even <laughs> calling out a specific people or discriminating a certain people. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is how you'd get a certain people believing that um, the person who is in charge there is a direct prophet of God yeah. or is Jesus himself. Mm-hmm. Or you get, you, you find these weird mm-hmm. concepts in the whereby you feel like you guys are originally Catholic or you guys are originally Protestant, but, but how did you get here in between? It's just a thought of one man mm-hmm. or one woman you get, and it's, it's just chaotic. I, I don't know. I fear creating a cult. <laughs> that's a dangerous, <laughs> thing. a dangerous thing. Because you'll make people believe in it. Yeah. And then uh, maybe the consequences and how people maybe later on will react. Yeah. Which consequences? You've you've had of, you've had of KKK. Ah. No. Um, a cult in the US, very chaotic. They used to kill people for sport, and look them up. It's it's not a good story. It's not a good. Killing people. It's, a, it's no. <laughs> the original idea is not to kill. Mm-hmm. The original idea is, we are, the good people. We are the right people. Those. People no, are not good. You get good. you create that belief in people, and in a year or two, obviously your minds will tell you those people do not deserve to live. Yeah. It doesn't have to begin with that motive, but the simple fact that you've already created a, 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 a mental picture to people whereby the, they know that that specific group of people is in that the same way you know snakes are bad. Mm-hmm. You get that is a mental picture painted to us when we were kids and everything like it. But you will still find people who pet snakes, yeah, and yeah. they they will tell you the complete opposite of that. And it's scientifically it's true. Yeah. You will get to hear that snakes do not attack unless provoked. Yeah. They'll stay still even the most deadliest of snakes. They won't. Would, you will pass by them as long as you do not make or do an action which will seem Threat. provocative to them. You get, and then it puts you in that situation. So. I don't know, such such things. Cults are, are dangerous things, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Though that is a strong point. Whereby Ooh, you have the numbers. Yeah, you have numbers, numbers, you have followers, you have ah. you have the influence, mm-hmm. that is the word. You have the influence out there to to make people believe in you enough to convince them that you know what guys, I don't believe in this and this. I believe in this, come join my group. Mm-hmm. And this is how we'll be so operating. Why are you where are you putting you picturing a cult as a bad thing? How what about you come up? All with? cults you know of mm-hmm. are bad. No, no, no. I don't no. think there's a cult. There's, it's because <laughs> there's a positive cult. I've never I've never heard that. of I'm saying you can <laughs> you can come up with don't use the word cult. It's uh, sect. That is actually sect mm-hmm. is also a good one because uh, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think there is a way, let's say even us, Alpha House, as Alpha House, I don't think there is a way we could have said we're starting a cult and these are our, our beliefs without creating the possibility of the beliefs that we do not believe in are bad. That is the problem with cults. You get, you create, the, the problem isn't the, the, the things you'll tell people. You may tell people, but hey, this is good, this is what we'll do, and everything checks out. But the problem with cults is that when you tell them, you know what, uh, us as Alpha House, we, we, we believe that everybody should wake up in the morning and do ABCD and wash themselves facing the sun, for example, and chant some weird things there. After a good period of time where that has been implemented and solidified in their minds, they will start believing that everybody who does not who doesn't do, that. do that facing the sun, mm-hmm. now nah, you have a problem. And then when arguments begin, people, things get heated, and then it, it becomes a whole... I, I think that is why actually most cults end up just being I'm very messy. Uh-huh. What defines a, oh, oh, what defines a cult, a cult? 
Por diferencia de caldo. The whole idea of religion can't be a cult because it's, it's no, so think define about the, it. Define the word cult. According to me, mm-hmm. okay, first, religion can't be a cult because it's something already in almost everybody. You get that is something already there. Mm-hmm. But you picking, pick pointing something from that religion and making it the main thing and is making it, a certain group of people believe in that. Started? I guess. Yeah, uh, that is that is why we are saying uh, how the new religion came about. There were cults. potholes <laughs> which created cults. You get because people yeah. now started believing. You know what? Uh, the religion they brought, uh, every, everything they told us. Uh, uh, I'm refusing that. So, but from here to here, it's okay. So let's t- take that and believe in that. Mm-hmm. Another group of people will find this group and say, no. what they have believed in up to here is okay. wrong. Let's take this. So by the time you're reaching like the tenth group of people to meet these people, they already are cult. They've only taken one thing from the original group. So and they've created a whole bunch of other things which are not even relatable to this. So I believe that is what the ideologies are what define a cult. A cult. The ideologies because I guess a cult is just a, a piece of maybe belief information, maybe uh, derived from something, and then maybe either you are against it or you are uh, in it, but yeah. you are not exactly sure. That's how maybe uh, the Roman Catholic Church maybe split because mm-hmm. they believe that no, you're not supposed to maybe bow down when you're praying, yeah. kneel down, and they saw that that uh, as maybe worshiping idols. Mm. For them, that's bad. Yeah. For for the, the people, others, we, yeah. That's we are okay. That's so, how it's supposed to be. So they are making uh, the original group. And saying maybe that's the, that's a cult, like that's not mm-hmm. right. So how that's I guess that's how it's formed. <laughs> that's how everything is now. Because yeah. I can even remember in high school we used to ask, we used to have so many <laughs> arguments about that with Catholic people. We're mm-hmm. like, why do you guys? Okay, not me personally, but I used to hear those stories. Like yeah. people asking, why do these people uh, pray to? Mm-hmm. You get, and then yeah. to other people, uh, to, to the Protestants, you hear people saying, Protestants are too free. You get, they are messy, they don't believe, you get, because, uh, hey, again, so, it's not that defined for protesters. For us, They're just cults. It's just that they, we don't do yeah. anything bad, actually, if you think about it, I'd no, say. No, for us, we are now the segment that is, uh, okay, we have our belief. So, when you're seeing, like, the uh, the issue for Shakahola, mm-hmm. no, that's bad according to us. Mm-hmm. But for them, that's okay. That was the good thing. That's, that's how it's supposed thing. to be. So, for them, they're seeing us as the bad people. As we're seeing yeah. them as the bad people. So, it's just a, but that is just a lot of misinformation. Something. That's just it's a lot just, of misinformation. Yes. But the good thing about it is that you can just tell right from wrong. Yes. That is now the bottom <laughs> now, line. Yeah. You can just see this and just say, no, yes. this is, yeah. there is no way this is the right way yeah, to go. Yeah. You can get. Yeah. Situations that emerge periodically. And if you want me to go to the Bible a little, there are actually predictions of them. If you read the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 24, it says that in the last day there shall come many Christs who claim to be Christ, and they shall work wonders. And if it were possible, even the very elect would be confused. Because the human spirit and the human mind is always looking for solutions. And these cultic leaders are capable of confusing people and telling them that if you follow this path, then all your problems should be and will be solved. (laughs) No, no, you see, (laughs) exactly, that's that's, that's my point. So is this somebody who picks a specific thing and then they create ideologies about it and all you have to do is convince, convince just a bunch of people and tell them to spread the word. And then you just have a bunch of people doing very wrong things out there. You get. And though I would like I would like to ask, I used to love these conversations in high school. Do you like believe we're in the last days? Something like that. Believe in this? Do you believe we're in the last days? Because if you are to say about many Christ, yeah, the predictions in the Bible, um, in the New Testament... Uh, most of them have come true. I, I've read um, Revelations um, a good number of times when I was young. Uh, still young, but uh, earlier, <laughs> a few years back, I used to read it as like it's a movie. I used to read it like I'm watching a movie, but it's true though. 
a lot of things which they say uh, might happen in sim- symbol- symbolically because the Bible doesn't say like you get that a priest will be bad or something like that. You get that they use it symbolically. They are happening to some extent to get. So, I would, uh, do you believe in okay, such uh, things? Okay, for me, uh, yeah, I have two concepts. Mm-hmm. I have the scientific concept and the mm-hmm. religion concept. The, scientif- the scientific concept uh, majors on facts. Yeah. The religion uh, concept Majors on belief. Yeah, faith and everything. Me, I believe that the world ends for a person if he dies or she dies. Yeah. That's the that's the end of world yeah. for you. For us, we'll continue living. Um, and also, I also have a strong faith in God. Uh, I have this. Uh, okay, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but uh, that uh, I okay, I believe in God because okay, I've seen maybe some of the miracles he has done in my life and <laughs> i believe in god so that when i go to heaven in case i go to heaven i find him there then i'll be on the safe side <laughs> and two in the scientific and the political uh, sector i believe it because like okay this is my fellow human being what if i do wrong to him or her like it hurts the way yeah. when you do to me it hurts that's that uh, that is what uh, motivates me to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Now, keeping faith aside, keeping religion and all that aside, like the humanity. Humanity, yeah, it's, it's humanity. Me. Yeah. It's me. Now and then, when I combine that with uh, maybe religion, it's a cult. Heaven, yeah, it's a oh, cult, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cult. You're into no, no, cult. No, 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 no. He has he has said, I believe this. I believe this. Yeah, but he isn't trying know, to know, make know, people join him in that. Yeah, so you know. do believe but if like... You, if you believe in God, you yeah, believe yeah, okay, in everything okay, that yeah. comes along with him. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. believe like... So do you believe that you're in the end days? No. To him, when you die, when that you is die your last day. That, you're in your last days when you're dying mm-hmm. already. Though, though that, that may be a very strong argument because if you're saying already the things that are predicted for the last days are already happening, it means that we're already there. But the world isn't ending. It's yeah. just ending when you die. When you but die. you experience the false prophets, mm. the the drought. Maybe, we, okay, not all of us have experienced, but you never know. Maybe somebody somewhere experienced that. You get, so there's but a way you can just bring it about. Okay. What about you? I think you differ. Uh-huh. Because you <laughs> said you believe in God. Yes, I do. Yes. The Bible says that. The Bible says. The last day, the trumpet will be heard and seasons will come and all that. Can I so, tell you something funny? Yes. Maybe everybody who dies here is a champion for the day. Oh, wow. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you think, you know, that, that is the weirdest Ooh. thing about faith and, and belief and everything. You just don't know. That. You get, literally, oh. we literally, we all believe, mm-hmm. or most of us do believe in God and everything. Mm-hmm. Nobody has ever gone there and come back to tell us that, yeah. you know, guy, what guys, I saw God. And he's real. So let me just go back there. We'll talk to him. We'll be there. <laughs> Nobody has ever told us that. You get. Nobody is there to tell you anything about the manifestation of everything that you've been told about uh, the last days or the devil or God or anything. You get. We're just there believing. You get. So you never know. You can argue with anything, but oh. anybody can argue right back mm-hmm. with anything because nobody at the end of the day knows. You just yes. have to believe that what you're saying wow. is correct. What I've said might not be correct. You get No, I don't even voice. believe in what I've said. Uh, I, mean, I don't even believe. Don't. But I'm just supporting what you said because yeah. it can be possible. You Take get it. Okay. Uh, let's take a perspective of uh, when maybe you are asleep and then maybe you are... Some people dream when they are dead. Mm-hmm. But that's scary, man. <laughs> okay, that's scary, scary. obviously. <laughs> but uh, the fact that when you're dreaming and then you just wake up from a maybe a dream, you are just going somewhere in a big hall and and then you are just trying to remember how that thing was. Mm-hmm. The power of brain is way less to determine what happens after death. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so uh, I get that. Even if you have maybe you have died in a dream and maybe you have uh, awakened mm-hmm. you can't explain exactly yeah because the brain uh, is it, brain it doesn't have that have capacity power. to to it know what is there after death. yeah Eish. religion is very deep <laughs> <laughs> okay for me for, for me for me i believe that uh, the world will end but now the world will not end 
Well, in a perspective of the earth will disappear. Yeah, there is the political aspect that any time it can end. Joe Biden can do that thing and then you're all <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. America, USA, <laughs> Europe, and it's, and it's a mess. It's a yeah. mess out here. But uh, for people to, uh, for, for a generation to come to an end, mm-hmm. I take it as uh, maybe some time back when the dinosaurs dominated the world and then it took a lot of years for the last dinosaur to die maybe mm-hmm. then maybe it was the strongest so i also believe in that that if the world will end your world will end oh. when you die that people will continue living it's more of us dying than yeah. the actual world the dying. actual world ending so uh, it will take time take time and maybe the world will remain with maybe two people Let and then Imagine one will kill the other. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they stop to death. And yeah, and then something else will... happens, a new process happens. And then now, maybe, new uh, life. for example, now the, maybe the technology that we have, maybe the aliens that are being created, they will now dominate the world. And that will be the next, gen- the, the next generation. The they will create their religion. Maybe they will create their education system. Maybe they will create something new and destroy everything, destroy yeah. every nuclear thing that uh, is existing, every city, everything. And now they levelize it for their, benefit. maybe for their benefit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so. Actually, I have a question though. Mm-hmm. Um, do you believe there is any relation between religion and war? Or there is any influence of religion on yeah. war? Yeah, mm. very, a lot. Because there's, there's power in what people believe in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to convince people otherwise from yes. what because I've ever had somewhere um, somebody once said that the it was like a different statement but it, it was in one somebody was speaking but they said different it was something concerning that the Catholic power the Catholic Church has so much power and then there was something like religion mm-hmm. is the most powerful thing yes. than actual presidents actual war because it's easy to tell people, you know what, like, they, they were, for example, like, okay, we thought, mm-hmm. for example, like, if the Pope wakes up one day and says, you know, guys, um, all Catholics protest against the state, that would be a problem. No? Yeah. <laughs> that would be hey. a problem. Yeah, you see, and it's much more easier to do that than an actual president telling, you know what, my citizens, yeah. let's make all with the states you get that is nobody will be will be there for it but if your pastor out there in church mm-hmm. tells you, you know what let's burn that village to the ground mm-hmm. that's now where you find people doing very weird things but i believe that uh, <clears throat> the the strongest point of uh, bringing a war majorly relies on religion in the maybe the past decades mm-hmm. like uh, maybe let's say from maybe uh, before let's okay let's t- just talk about the before the 21st century after the uh, independence and all that most of the political leaders majorly use the uh, religion to fight like for the case of yeah, Al-Qaeda, that's true. That's true. Saddam Hussein, yeah. the case of uh, Palestine and Israel Jewish and all that they ah, use actually true it was use, more religion more religion yeah, to convince thing. people to get into it and that thing went uh, and slowly uh, okay that time people had strong beliefs mm-hmm. yeah they had strong but right now people are just like just make money travel the world and that's all like they have they don't have the strong belief that's why uh, maybe <coughs> uh, political leaders are using other ways maybe oh. to to conquer a country to uh, yeah, in find politicians country. in churches yeah. So uh, <laughs> right now people yeah. people are not <laughs> strong in religion as before as before yeah yeah that's messed up and history is replete with that if you look at the crusades in the roman catholic church you look at the inquisitions in the churches you look at all these religions there have always been individuals who have succeeded in persuading fellow men that they enjoy extraordinary powers and that they are the pathway to eternal life. It is our duty, therefore, to educate the people 
the people must be educated and the people must be independent because one of the greatest maladies in human affairs is ignorance the great german dietrich bainhofer said that one of the greatest things in human history is to have a people who are laboring under ignorance they become impervious to reason they are susceptible to manipulation and history is replete with individuals who capitalize and use ignorance as a tool of manipulation shaka hola is an example which is now unique to kenya religion is a big business that is a multi billion dollar industry when uh, that uh, jewish uh, philosopher some call him latter day prophet malcolm x It is a business. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge one. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, there's a time. <laughs> it was, it was an actual issue worldwide, whereby churches aren't taxed. Yeah, yeah, they're not taxed. There's no church which is told, you know, all of your income you're supposed to give the government a certain percent. It's all the money, clean money. Mm-hmm. That's why you find some very big churches out here, mm-hmm. and you're like some. there are very rich pastors yes. out here oh in the name of serving the lord and everything because again the thing he said about ignorance is 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 i think the biggest factor in the world for convincing people to do very nasty things out here because nobody will ask nobody will question if they're ignorant nobody will ask what if you know what he's told us or she has told us we're supposed to to kill a bunch of people they don't they don't believe in what we believe in they can't be wrong nobody will stand up and ask such questions because everybody is ignorant to the other facts they're just accepting what is being fed into them and yeah i do believe ignorance <laughs> there is something we used to be told by our social studies teacher that when you go to court um, you're told ignorance is not a defense there is no where you can, you're, you're allowed to say I didn't, I didn't know that was in the law ideally we have entered the whole constitution i don't know all the laws out there you get i can be caught for literally anything but you can't say i can't say i i don't i didn't know that it's expected of you to be smart enough to question everything and to have known everything concerning that specific thing you get but people don't even take the time to to get to know everything that there is you get nobody has taken the the time to to question things well enough to say that you know what what this person is saying this can't be right you know i don't know much about religion but killing other people because of a b c d now nah, that's not right you get and about uh, church being a business i think uh, oh lord kenya is perfect in that perfect example you know the church is every corner you go the, the common denominator in all churches is that you'll be asked for money that's sad i don't have a problem with it but Oh lord that is sad that that is the only constant thing the only thing no, all no, preachers will say no but they are supposed to i get mm. but you get that money isn't isn't you know how um long ago what they used to do it was more of burning sacrifices mm-hmm. you get you come you come you burn your sacrifice to the lord and that is your way mm-hmm. of giving thanks right and then when they were actually bringing material things if i remember properly it was on instances where they used to bring gold silver and other jewelry so that they could be melted to create materials to build temples churches um things that are supposedly supposed to be used for that purpose of serving the deity you believe in right that is, if i remember correctly that is how i remember most of the stories that i used to see i used to read in the bible where they were told to bring things to the church they there is no one used to be told that those that money used to go to those preachers or that money used to go to the pockets of the preachers or or to to certain specific people you get if it was to help the needy there was no money coming to the church to go help the needy it was more of bring your goods let's take them to the they rather do that every week you get you know if the kids are starving bring food let's take it to the kids that is more of help bring clothes don't give me money i i decide that's to do that's part of it you get obviously yeah, uh, yeah but I, i'm 
I'm trying to put uh, out there how 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 I know I know by I know, now I know the point that you're right now bring. everything is all about you know what mm. bring the money mm. bring the money mm. bring the money who tithe everybody used to remove tithe in the olden days but uh, I do not have that strong belief that tithe was physical things or physical money because a lot of the time when there was no money you get uh, on, at that time they were bringing the things of value at the moment money is which, thing. which are, are, the, are the things I'm telling you, mm-hmm. if I'm not wrong, I, I, they used to go directly to do something in the church or build something or construct something or... Not buying the pastor. Yeah, not, not buying your pastor <laughs> a jet, man. Mm-hmm. These guys are multi-millionaires, no joke, man. Uh, it's, it's shocking, you know? Mm-hmm. These guys are multi-millionaires and everything. It's, bro, if you Google, I've ever Googled world's richest pastors, man. Those wow. people have mad man. networks. They, are, they have networks like CEOs, man. And hmm. you know. CEOs of that church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a sense in which when you look at development in its totality, and I think it is Mwalimu Julius Kambaragi Nyerere who said it very well, that when we talk about development, we are not simply talking about roads and buildings and other things. Those are important but we are talking about the development of the human person so that they have self-esteem, so that they are able to be aware of who they are and they know what they are and who their God is and how to relate with that God. But religion as we practice in Africa today is indeed one of the factors that is undermining African development. I remember myself saying at a different setting that prayers without action is superstition. Today, you see in many African countries, factories are being closed and they are being converted into church buildings. You see many critical institutions which ought to run being converted into church houses where no productivity is there. There is no production at all. It's just consumption and the collection of tithes and offerings. And the things that we ought to do for ourselves, we are praying and fasting. We are praying and fasting so that we may make cars, praying and fasting so that we may get into the technological world. I've said it and I repeat it, the things that require technology will never be earned through theology. Theology has its place and technology has its place. And in Africa, we are, in my view, even disobeying God himself. If you look at the Christian Bible, it says, go ye and subdue the world, it says. And it says, by the sweat of thy brow, thou shall leave. How can you pray and fast and expect to compete? The Chinese are praying to their God. The- Lord is saying, saying that, you know, you, these rich people on earth, most of them are actually atheists. Yeah. Yeah. So he's actually saying that it doesn't matter if you pray or fast or do whatever you, a what whatever ritual you want to do. Bottom line is you must work because God is a very fair God. Yes. There's no way that you can be waking up and praying like eight hours a day and <laughs> expect and, and expect some just something just yeah, things man. to come up your way. No. 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 Must work. I, I do believe that is another misconception that in the church. Mm-hmm. That yeah. uh, it's very rare, or in my experience, let me just say that, mm-hmm. in my experience, uh, I don't think I've ever had most pastors say, pray and fast, and mm-hmm. then work. Yeah. You get, you just, it, it mostly uh, ends there, pray and fast, mm-hmm. you'll get that scholarship, pray and fast, you'll get that job, pray and fast, you'll get that money, pray mm-hmm. and fast, you'll get that car. Mm-hmm. You get, and then it's like, God just drops them in front ah, of your house and it does like, oh, that's like, yeah, <laughs> like mana and everything. <laughs> but nobody actually tells you, you know what, uh, there is that car action behind that mm-hmm. that you're supposed to actually be doing. But the pastors can tell you that. No, I, because they want you to be there. Constantly. Because when you, once you get the money, you don't, you don't think that most, most, most people, when they get rich, they actually stop going to churches. They don't see the reason behind it. Yeah, that's where the pastor went to. to and it's bad business. Yes, it's bad. It's oh. <laughs> bad business. 
the God, the Japanese, the Koreans, the others, but they are engaged in research because research is about God. If God says that he has created you in his own image and has given you a brain to think, how then do you think that God is going to supply you with manna and quail? I say sometimes half in jest and half seriously as a term of art that if there was a kitchen where they were making manna in heaven and making quail, roasting quail and dropping them to, the, to man on earth, that kitchen was closed, never to be opened. Never to be opened. Uh, yeah. Well, mm. well. We'll re read a few comments. Maybe you can check about the uh, Go down, yeah. Okay, maybe we can do one. Uh, I'm not a Jew, I'm an African. My spiritual home is not Jerusalem or Mecca, but Africa. African culture is paramount to me. Africa is my origin, and I'm proud of it. I won't run away from myself. Instead, I will embrace my roots. That's a positive uh, comment about uh, our continent. Yeah. That's a Somebody who believes in the roots, yeah, how yeah. everything was. Mm. Uh. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. This guy is smart, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy is smart. Mm. Mm. Technology mm -hmm. will never be earned through theology. That's yeah. That was actually a yeah. mad point. Yeah. Um, the genes. You pray for it. And <laughs> oh, well. I'm in Hey. Hey. Anyway, guys. So. 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 Yeah. Uh huh. I. The YouTube page, it's the Alpha House. Go check out our videos with Professor Lumumba. Yeah, you've heard of him, and he's a very, he's a very clever guy. <laughs> Smart. One thing about religion, uh, about religion, mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a deep, it's a deep thing, and it, that does not have an end. Yeah, I don't think there's, you can there's, talk about it and there's then. No, there's yeah. no argument about religion that comes to a specific yeah, conclusion. A, a conclusion. Yeah. We debate, we reach somewhere. You just, what you believe, that's it. What I believe, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's meet next time. We'll pick it from, yeah. from somewhere. Yeah, man. So, uh, that, uh, that was our uh, episode, maybe trying to get some few points from PLO. Lumumba explains. And... It was quite interesting. Let's know what's your take about some of the points that you discussed in the episode and hope to see you in the next episode. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, <laughs> and, comment. Oh my God. and comment, man. <laughs> Tell us some of the other things you'd like us to react to, talk about. Yeah, man, that has been our time. Mad love from the Alpha House. Peace.